G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I haven't done a product review for quite a while, and I thought, yep, it's time, I'll do another one. And I'm going to do another welder review, another small baby welder review, DC welder, inverter welder. Because that last uh, video I did where I reviewed that the smallest inverter welder that Banggood sell got a lot of interest way more than I expected and one of the comments uh, was from a, a viewer who said look you know if you go to these uh, retail you know the major outlets for welders and stuff they just don't have those baby ones huh? and he said to the guy at the shop you know how come you don't have the really teeny weeny ones and uh, the guy said oh no there's no interest no one's interested in those tiny things you know well, I mean, looking at the video results, you have to say that's completely off the mark. There's a lot of people that are obviously interested. So anyway, I thought, okay, we'll do another another welder review, and we'll, I'll review what was previously the smallest welder that Banggood uh, sold, DC inverter welder. Now, Banggood had been around for a little while, and when I first looked at Banggood welders, they had six welders, and one of them is the form factor that we're going to look at today. Now, if you look at the Banggood site today, they've got 23 welders at the last count, and six of those are the same form factor as the original, including the original, which was a, I think it was called a rail, a rail tool. So, Banggood have sent me one of these, and I'm going to just see what it welds like. I've always been really interested in that little welder because if I hadn't reviewed the used well, I would have gone for that. It just looks so, well, it looks sweet it's clean looking it's it's a, it, it looks good whether it welds any good i don't know i mean that last welder i reviewed the the smallest welder from banggood i wasn't very uh struck on that it was a pretty ordinary sort of welder it had a few problems you know very rod sensitive and uh the digital readout was total crap i mean it was way off the mark so Let's have a look at this form factor uh, today, the, the, the old form factor, and just see how it goes. Okay, so here's the box. Juba. This one's called Juba. And they've sent me a 10 amp travel adapter. It should run this okay. Now this is ZX7 200. You know, supposedly it's 200 amps. But ZX7 is a series of circuit boards. Um, for inverter welders, Chinese inverter welders, there's a whole range of ZX7s. They go from 140 amp up to 500 in various models. I've got a spec sheet on the ZX7 series that came with my used wheel, and I'll show it to you now. So you get the welder. Yeah, that looks pretty neat, I've got to admit. We've already seen the, the power uh, adapter, converter. You get a rudimentary hand shield with a lens, which um, when I compared it to my existing lenses because there's no number on this this is definitely a number 11 and surprisingly it's exactly the same size same dimension glass as for the old style flip down um, CIG helmet that I use so it's a standard it is a standard filter lens size which is a good thing so I can use that in my flip down I mean some people still do use these things my brother-in-law wills with one of these things a fiberglass one and he won't use anything else and he's a he's a better welder than i am and yeah i know that you know some people use them i would never use one but 
anyway, it's better than nothing, I suppose. And they've got the filter looks pretty good, actually. It's a, it's a nice, thick, quite a, quite a good looking one. So you get that. Then you get dense connectors with their rubber booties. You get an Allen key to do up your dense connectors. You get a shoulder strap which goes on the top of this because there's no handle. You get some Chinese literature that is totally meaningless to me. It looks like some sort of a tick box service thing or something. No idea what that does. You get a, a little uh, ticket of some sort, but once again, useless. And then you get the user manual, which is all Chinese, and really not much, not much going on there that we can sort of use. It does show you uh, the various ZX models and the KVA ratings and the supposed amperage range, but all these figures, every every one of these booklets I look at, the numbers are all different, you know. <laughs> you just can't believe any of this stuff, really. It's it's just uh, unreal. They give you a circuit diagram here, for what it's worth. It looks pretty basic, but there you go. And then you get your, your rod dimensions and your supposed amperages that you're going to run at. And the amperages are the correct amperages, but as I've found out with the previous two welders, that's not what the dial says, you know. And to get it welding correctly, you're going to be higher than you're going to be higher than these readings. Okay, so the first thing to do is check it to see if it's got a uh, an earthed chassis because not all these are earthed. Yes, it has. It's earthed. So we're off to a flying start. That is a good thing. Now, looking at this, it's got a nice, heavy, really, really heavy uh, cable. And uh, I suppose it's probably your usual meet, uh, meter or so. Yeah, it looks to be about a meter. So that's the usual sort of size you get. But that's a, yeah, that's a really good got heavy cable on the front you've got 10 to 200 the usual knob feels okay yeah not bad a little bit wobblier than some of the others it feels all right and you've got power on um, over temperature light this will have a thermal shutdown, I expect. It'll blow out through the front. You can see the heat sink in there. Uh, on the back you've got... Yep. Typical setup fans. Suck air in. One of those on-off switches that lights up. On the bottom you've got a speci sticker. No rubber feet all metal and uh, on the front you've got positive and negative so positive for the bottom one ne the uh, ground is on the is at the top so of course you can swap them around do whatever you want as far as uh, polarity goes but you would normally use positive electrode negative ground okay well I suppose the thing now is to plug it in and see if it actually does run. All right, well, we've got a problem first off. The plug is two, two pin plus earth. It's grounded, but the adapter they give you, the travel adapter, is not grounded, not for this type of plug. So even though this is earth, you're not going to, you won't get the benefit of it because this plug isn't compatible with the earthing on this plug here. You need one like this. 
which has got a little earth prong in it, which mates with the earth earth uh, contact on this. So, yes, don't use that. Get yourself one of these, which is the proper uh, way to go. It's fully earthed, and I think it's 15 amps, this one as well. Or is it? No, it's 10 amp. Yep, it's still a 10, but it's got the earth. All right, so we won't be using that thing. Right, we're checking the workshop voltage, 245. It can be 245 or 250 in this workshop. It varies a little bit. Some inverter welders don't like booting up if it's 250 volts or a bit more. Uh, some of the big brand names can do that at times. Both of these previous uh, Chinese welders are, are running the shed. They've run on 250 without a problem. I expect this one probably be the same, but at the moment we're 245, so that should be okay as well. The last thing to do now before we fire this thing up and try some welding is to look at the, the duty cycles on this thing. Now it says in the in the literature on the web, 60% duty cycle, but I mean that's a meaningless figure. That could be 60% at any amperage. So if we look at the tag on the machine, which that should be correct, or we hope it's correct. And we see that at 100 amps, it's got a 20% duty cycle. At 70 amps, it's got a 60% duty cycle. And at 60 amps, it's got a 100% duty cycle. So that duty cycle is falling off pretty damn quick. At 100, you're down to 20. Well, the thing is, you're going to be welding a 2.5 rod at 110 amps. That is a pretty horrible figure, if that's true, if that's correct. I mean, that would mean that if you were willing at 3.2, there would be, would be almost no duty cycle. I mean, I can't believe that's correct. We'll find out. We'll run some rods through it. But, I mean, going on those figures, yeah, if you were to, um, yeah, if you were to weld at, say, 140 amps, if this thing is capable of it, there'd be virtually no duty cycle. So I think there's something seriously wrong with these figures. I can't believe that's correct. Anyway, we'll try it and see. Okay, that was a Chinese sweat rod at 90. Let's see what it's, what it's like. So there's the weld. It struck okay. Where's the hammer? See if it's any good. okay yep that welds okay all right we'll try the dreaded murex rod 2.5 mil on this backside and see if it goes any good at 90. most of my uh, welders do not like murex rods nope we'll go up to 100. Yep, no problem. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Not a bad weld, really. It, uh, so yeah, this thing seems to weld really well. I mean, that was at 100. As I said, normally AC I'd be 110, and a Murex hard rod to use on my AC welder welded pretty good on this. I think this is a first class little welder, first off. I mean, let's go bigger rods and see how it goes. It certainly doesn't seem rod sensitive at all.
Nothing wrong with those welds. Okay, 120 amps, 3.2 mm rod, Ferrocraft. We can fill in this uh, this gap here. Now this welder hasn't shown any signs of overheating. That duty cycle seems fine. There's only a bit of there's a bit of warm air coming out the front, but it's nothing really. So I think the duty cycle is quite all right. None of those figures are rubbish on the bottom. Let's do this. See how it goes. Look at that. No problem, I think they were still in these holes. Looking good. So is this really a 200 amp welder? Well, judging by its performance, which is 100% honest and accurate, um, it used all the settings from my AC welder. You've got to say, yeah, it's quite possible. Certainly for home use, you'll never go past a 3.2 millimeter rod normally. So this thing's only just ticking over, really. We're only using half its capabilities there was no evidence of uh, overheating or poor duty cycle performance. It it worked fine. So the duty cycle figures that they're quoting on the on this unit, there's something weird there. They can't be right. I'd certainly be happy to buy this. And I I would give this a ten out of ten for sure on construction and performance. It it's really very good. So yeah, perfect welder to switch across from AC to DC. Now, price-wise, $150 AU, 113 USA, but you can get the same form factor, 130 or 98 on Banggood. As I said, there's a half a dozen of these, look very similar, they've got the same ZX7 uh, 200 circuitry. I presume they would perform the, the same, but you can't be absolutely sure. You know for sure this one does well very easily, it, it gave no problems really and uh, yeah it's a great little welder I thoroughly recommend this one uh, which is more than I can say for the previous two where there was a few little issues but uh, very easy to weld with this welder okay well that's it from me I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time cheers